All right, what is going on guys? Uh, today is part three of my knife build, uh, build along, whatever you wanna call it. And so today I'm gonna be talking about grinding. Specifically how I grind my chef's knives and my kitchen knives. So let's get started. All right, so the very first step is pretty basic. All I'm gonna do is just gonna clean up Clean up my bevels and my flats, and I'm gonna mark a center point on along the edge and down to the tip on the front. So that's my first step. guys these are the steps that I use when grinding my chef's knives so here you go take a screenshot whatever don't care so first thing I'm gonna do is I break the 90s break the 90s on the edge bring up the primary bevel um, probably about a third to half of the way up this is some fairly thick steel that I'm using right now one it's all I have and two, um, I like it a little bit thicker. It gives me, I feel like it gives you a nice uh, handle in the pinch grip, but I'll thin it down anyway, so it's not a big deal. Then raise those grinds and add in a distal taper near the front, true up your bevels, blend everything, and then finally convex. So the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna break these 90s. When you're breaking the 90s, make sure you use a dead belt. If you put on a fresh belt and you put this 90 degree edge of your knife hardened steel into that abrasive, you're gonna shear every single part of that abrasive, which is definitely not something you want when belts are, you know, 10 to 15 bucks each. So, step one, I'm going to break the 90s. Not the decade, the knife. I've got my 90 degree edges here hit down. I probably hit that at a 45 degree angle. Um, that's just gonna make sure that going forward, there's no harsh edge here that's gonna rip up my belts because I don't want that. I took it down to about eh, 20 to 30 thousandths of an inch. And at this point, you wanna make sure that you have as straight a line that you can get because obviously you want that straight cutting edge so you know where it's gonna land each time. So my next step is to do the primary bevels. Now since this steel is a bit thicker than probably what you'll be using, or maybe not, this is around 0.16. It's gonna be much thinner than that when it's done though.
Looking good so far. So the next thing I want to do is raise my bevels up. So I'll probably bring them up since this is a, again a thicker steel. I'm probably going to bring it up maybe here, and then I'll see what my what my measurements are like. So at this point, it's probably a good idea to use a fresh belt. I believe, in my opinion, this is probably where most of the material is getting removed because you're bringing that bevel all the way up to the spine to create a nice distal taper. And a fresh belt, especially on carbon steel, is gonna make that so much easier. So, that's a good idea. Okay, very, very quickly, a couple things to note while I'm grinding this knife. Number one is I'm grinding it on an angle. That's gonna help me keep that line from the heel up to where I want it to go, number one. Number two, it's gonna help me prevent any sort of hard pointed areas, like the corners digging into uh, my grinds here. I'm barely putting any pressure with my hands up by the edge. I don't need to remove much material from there anymore. So I'm focused more down here. And as I'm grinding it, I'm sort of, with this hand and guided by these fingers, I'm sort of twisting it as I get closer to the front of the knife to give it a slimmer profile up front. So keeping the knife on an angle and adding more pressure down here rather than up at the edge. Two things I'm focusing on during this grind. So my dimensions here, sorry, here, no, sorry, here. We're looking pretty good so far. I've got it pretty thinned out. Distal taper is looking swell thus far. So now I'm gonna move on to truing up the bevels. So while running my flat plant, and, you know, this way, which is how you would normally grind a knife, is great. It doesn't cover that much surface area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt my flat patent, patent on an angle and run my grind lines like that, pretty much the length of the blade. And the point of that is that when I run the flat, flat when I run this, this blade, you know, on that, angle, I'll be able to flatten out any higher low spots and really flatten out that blade as best as I can because I'm going to be coming, I'm going to be covering more of a surface area um, with the belt than I would if I'm running the belt, you know, straight up and down from the edge to the spine. So at this point, it's really going to be a process of me going back and forth between truing up my bevels on that 30 degree angle and then taking measurements, seeing if I've hit my measurements. If I haven't, I go back a step um, to raising the bevels. I'll remove more material, true up my bevels again, take measurements until I hit my mark. And then I know I'm ready to move on to the next step. Forgot to mention, I'm gonna be bumping up to a 60 grit belt now, fresh 60 grit, um, because I'm trying to dial in my final dimensions and I don't need to be removing as much material as quickly as a 36 grit belt, but 60 will do a good enough job. Removes a decent amount of material, but not too much.
Okay, coming off the disc sander, pretty good. Yes, I didn't get all these scratches out, but the important part is that I was just, pretty, I'm pretty much just double checking that everything's flat where it needs to be. And it is. So that's good news. We can move on to blending the tapers. So now I'm just gonna basically right before where the handle starts, I'm gonna start vertically on my grinder to pull the material down this way. So I'll be pulling the knife up as the belt is moving downwards while putting pressure along the spine and sort of dragging the knife up and blending the taper because right now it ends at about here and I want it to come pretty much to the front of the handle. This is also going to help me remove more material up at the spine. So that's what I'm going to be doing right now and I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so that brings us to the final step in the bevel grinding process, which is adding the convexity to this flat grind. So I wanna turn this flat grind into a convex grind, adding strength behind that thin edge, as well as creating a little bit of that wedge action when you're cutting through your vegetables. Kind of like an ax wood through wood, except on a, on a much thinner, smaller scale. Now, at the moment, I think my the, the edge of my knife isn't sharp. Um, I mean, it is quite thin, but I'm at this point, I'm pretty much gonna take it very close to zero. And I don't wanna hit zero exactly, because during hand sanding, it's gonna take me the rest of the way, all the way to my zero edge. All right, so the plan now is to throw on a fresh 120 grit belt. Um, and essentially at this point, um, I'm gonna set myself up for hand sanding. Now there is gonna be one step after this if you have a disc sander. If not, you can use this step to take your, you know, the, the belt finish up to 220, 400, whatever you want if you're not hand sanding then you're not hand sanding. If you are, it's best now to make sure you have nice clean grinds all in the same grit. That way when you jump into hand sanding, um, you're not gonna be surprised with you know a 36 grit scratch or a 60 grit scratch. Something that's gonna take you a while to get out or you know force you to jump back to the machine. So anyways, that is my plan.
that's looking pretty good for me right there. That's off my belt sander, off my rotary platen. So that could be the end of it right there. Um, but like I mentioned, there's one more step that I like to do because I have a disc sander. Yes, I know, I've mentioned it a million times, but it's such a helpful tool. The last step I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my disc sander with a leather backing to help bring my grit up to about, I think I'll go to 400. And the, the disc sander with a leather back really, really helps smooth out and blend that grit. That way, once I jump right into hand sanding, I can start right at 400, and honestly, it's a breeze from there. So anyways, guys, that's it for this one. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, leave them down below, and I will get back to you. If not, I will see you in the next one. Peace.